If your campaign is going to crash, it's normally here. The first collision. Character creation. But why? So, how the heck can you stop this? Let's cover the three main antagonists for your game's demise. So, if you just say yes to everything when you're making the game and when you're helping people create stuff, it's going to be like corralling kids at a carnival. On the other hand, if you never let them suggest anything or create anything themselves or have any input, they're going to get bored or they're going to get destructive. And so, this episode is not going to cover the horror of players versus GMs, the destructive side, but we're going to cover the middle ground, the stuff you're going to commonly see, the things that you should know to begin. So if you want to know more about either extreme, I can cover that, just ask me. But moving on, the pitch is going to cover your butt as it sets expectations and the groundwork. So I hope that you've already watched that episode. If not, there's a link there. Um, but these episodes are actually released in a specific order because you're going to chronologically hit all these issues. I've been running for way too long. Trust me on that. They always seem to creep up. So the pitch gives you a base to lean on. So that way people are given freedom while still having the fences at the end of the playground for them to run to and know that they're able to explore, but within bounds. You need to stick to these fence lines. Don't let kids jump over the fences and shit like that. This is going to be the first place that you get recognized as the authority and the person running the show and the narrator, because if you give in to every single thing, even if it doesn't fit, they're going to think that you're setting the precedent that it's whatever they say goes and they're just going to run. So if there's no fences, people run far. So the biggest thing I see is how do you get new players to go from video game character mentality to a deep character that they want to role play inside this role playing game? Huge, huge dichotomy there. But if you're aiming to not have a bunch of murder hobos running around killing everything just for experience points, even if it's your shopkeeper and in innocence, then I've put together questionnaires on my Patreon for different needs. I'll cover the thought process here, but I realize that it's something I've done for years and years, and it's very rare among GMs and writers, and so I wanted to make them available in case you need them or you want to compare your own process to someone else's. So, uh, links are there. Moving on, let's get into it. Um, the main thing you want to focus on with these questions is that they guide the player to use imagination, like imagery specifically. And so asking them 10 or so questions, I've heard of people having like five pages of this shit, don't do that. Like this isn't homework, this is just something to spark their mind. Um, anyways, 10 questions to provoke their expectations or the concept that they have already in their mind. And so this is your keystone for your story. If you have everyone wanting to be a seafaring pirate, but your plans are to go into the Underdark, then your whole plot is gone. No deep dark down, deep dark for you. And so as a final note on the questionnaires, um, mine also have some human questions in there. I always want to know people's availability so I can actually schedule out the shit. Um, sometimes if we can't do a set schedule, it's good to touch bases with people and know what their schedule is, or if they don't have one for work, for example. But I also want to know their allergies, their allergies, their aversions, things like that, because I love my friends. I don't want to kill them by accidentally feeding them onions. <laughs> I have a player who's allergic to onions. He is fun to cook for. Don't accidentally kill your friends. <laughs> um, I also put the aversions in there because I don't want to traumatize them, but I also don't want to make it a game that disgusts them and they hide in the corner and kind of shiver and don't want to play. Um, some of the things that I have aversions for are like sex scenes. I feel like sex scenes are good for fading to black. I've talked about this in, I want to say the pitch. So if you've watched the other videos, I'm duplicating, I'll cut it here. Um, but you're the leader now. And so you need to do your best to lead them 
where they want to follow. Onto the player's plot dreams. Um, they're going to come to the expectations. Oh, to, they're going to come with expectations. So now that you have the general concepts, the goals, and what the players want in mind, you can make the antagonist. So they're going to communicate what plot they're looking for somehow. So hopefully you didn't want anything yet because they're going to have plenty of ideas and they can't know what your surprises or plans are because that would spoil the game. And so without spoilers, they're going to make up their own shit and their own expectations because you can't spoil the end. Therefore, your end is not their game. It's kind of a weird thing. Anyways, hence players are notorious for going absolutely off the rails at every turn. <laughs> it's going to be a learning process if you're new. But they do what they want. Um, <clears throat> they will do everything that you don't think of. If there's anything in the room, they're going to use it. If there's anything not in the room, they're going to ask to use it. So... If you have a door, they're going to either kick it in, they're going to take off the hinges, they're going to teleport around it, they will dig through the floor, even if it's their own house. Like, players are nuts. You won't ever get bored watching them. But you can use this to your advantage. Probably most of that's going to get cut out. So, they will consistently take two to three times longer than you plan for. So... Never expect your one-shot to be a one-shot unless you follow, like, I will make an episode on one-shots. Trust me. I've already got it in the works. Um, but your session will never go as short as you hope. Even if you expand the time durations, no matter what you think it's going to take, it's going to take longer. Um, pacing is a thing that I freaking love. I will make an episode if you guys ask about it. Pacing is what I've focused on for years. Uh, I'm tangenting. Anyways. So, the players who go off the rails and do everything that's weird, you have to be prepared to improv, and they're being creative. So, gently corral them, don't correct them. A cattle prod is too much, so maybe I'll make a video on how to guide players versus shoving them into the spot you want them to be. But... If you want them to go through a door or talk to a certain NPC, there's tricks to getting them to do it. I don't have time here. This is already a super long tangent. But all of this planning leads up to one dreaded moment. The first game, and wondering how all this planning is going to pan out. Again, thank you to my Patreons who are already subscribing, and also, hopefully those documents help. I'm going to make a bunch more in the future. So I'm going to show you in the next episode what the first session looks like, after 20 years of experience.